All right, folks. So what we have here is a CC branded DSS signal generator and counter. I was contacted by a company called Bob Love, and they asked if I would do a video review of this product. Of course, I said yes, so they sent it to me free of charge in exchange for this video review. In this video, we're going to go through the control panel, we're going to hook this up to an oscilloscope, we're going to hook it up to a multimeter, and we're going to take it apart. We're also going to install some software and show how you can control the device or create your own sine waves, or just signals in general, with the software. Let's go ahead and get started. PCBWay, the one-stop shop for all your creator and maker needs. PCBWay has a number of solutions to help you prototype PCBs that include manufacturing and shipping services at a competitive price point. CNC milling and 3D printing solutions are available to help with any mounting, case, or enclosure needs. PCBWay can help with PCB assembly by sourcing components and installing them to your prototypes. PCBWay provides customers with a support portal, allowing access to staff that can help you with all aspects of your project. At first, the interface looks complex, but it's really not. On the left, you have a power button, around a 2-inch display, and various function buttons. You also have some control buttons here, and then you have a main dial. This dial pushes in, but it doesn't do anything. We have an external in for signal counting, and then we have two external facing channels and that is where we can push signals. There's an adjustable bale on the bottom, and this thing is super duper light. It moves around on the desk quite a bit. On the back, we have a TTL port. I'm not entirely sure what that does. We have a USB port to hook to a computer, and then we have a DC 5 volt. This does come with your standard AC wall wart. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to plug this thing in and we're going to power this baby up. Once on, the display is very crisp and bright. Both channel 1 and channel 2 come on with signals being pushed out those BNC connectors. You can toggle them on with the channel 1 and channel 2 button or control which signal you want to modify. Okay, so here is the Amazon website where you can pick up this signal generator. Here it has all kinds of information about it. You can see the price is $125.99, and there's some pretty good pictures over here that you can check out. And I'll tell you a little bit about this. Now, this is some software that is supposedly available, and I'm going to try to track this down so we can install it and give it a whirl. Here are all the controls and ports on the back. And here is how you can use this device. Down here you just have some more information that you can check out and take a look at. As I mentioned, a link to this will be included in the description below. Alright, with this powered up, I can use this wave button to adjust the wave on either channel 1 or channel 2, whichever is active. And you can see here that there is a variety of different waves to choose from. This device also has software that allows you to create your own arbitrary waveforms. Out of the box, it has slots for 15 different arbitrary waveforms. I can use the mode button, or I can use these function buttons to change things like our frequency, amplitude, offset, duty cycle, and phase. The system button will allow me to see information such as my model, my part number, and I can make adjustments that are system-wide in terms of saving and load data. I can adjust the sound, the brightness, I can change the language. The mode button allows me to adjust the modulation mode and switch between channels. The measure button allows you to make adjustments or controls for the external import for when you're going to do any frequency counting. The signal generator also comes with a bunch of stuff, like these BNC to alligator cables. It actually comes with two, and that's pretty cool. I'm glad that they include those. It also comes with a, a USB cable 
for connecting to your computer. It comes with a CD-ROM, and it also comes with a BNC to BNC cable that I didn't show here, but we'll get to see in a few minutes. It comes with a manual, and that manual really isn't too bad. I did want to point out in section four of the specifications, your frequency range is limited based off of the type of signal that you are using. So this is something that you may want to consider. This also shows the characteristics for multiple models. Here we have the 60. Using the BNC cable that came with the device, I'm connecting channel one from my signal generator to channel one of my Hantec oscilloscope. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take a look and see what the frequencies look like. Okay, so here we are. We're feeding this into the Hantec oscilloscope, as I mentioned. Now I can manipulate the signals that we're seeing by using the control panel that we just reviewed on the signal generator. So let's go ahead and do that. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn down my frequency and then you can see how that changes here on the screen. I'm just going to auto this, uh, this signal so we can see it. Okay, I'm going to also adjust the amplitude. And then you can see how I can manipulate that. We're at 2 volts right now. And let's take a look at some of the different waves that it can generate. There's our square wave. That's the pulse wave. Here's the triangle. Partial sign. CMOS. That is a DC wave. Half wave. Here's the positive ladder. Negative ladder. Let's go ahead and connect the second port or second channels up and see what we can get there. Okay, so here we have two different signals coming in, uh, one from channel one and from channel two on the generator going into channel one and channel two on the hand tech. And let's just play around with it a little bit. Now, what I did was a Google search for the product number on the back of the device and it took me to this website this is the product number jds 6600 and here you can see a jds 6600 by joy it but it is the exact same device and if i scroll down on this page which will be linked in the description below you can see some information here like a manual and you can see the software and so we're going to download and install this software so I've downloaded the software and extracted the zip file. Here it's asking me if I'm sure I want to run the software. I do that by clicking the EXE in the main folder. I pick English installation and first I need to install the USB drivers. So I do that without issue. I click OK. And the next thing I need to do is install NI Visa. And this is a program from National Instruments that allows your computer to talk to measuring devices. I was a little nervous doing this at first, but it was no big deal. I just go ahead and I walk through the installation like I would any other software. I did speed this up a little bit for the video. I have to accept the two license agreements for National Instruments, and I do that. Here it tells me it may track my IP address. I continue along with the installation process. We finish the installation process for the National Instruments software, and then we are prompted to do a reboot before installing the software for directly controlling the signal generator. So we do a quick reboot. After a reboot, I go back into the zip folder and I run the install application again. I have to pick English and now I want to go down and install the English main program. This is going to prompt me to install the JDS 6600 software. I just pick all the defaults and run through the installation like I would any other installation. Once the installation is finished, I go ahead and I launch the program. And what I need to do first is I need to select the correct port. So I'm gonna go into Device Manager, and oops, look at that, I can't install the guide. I'm going to go into the Device Manager, and then I'm gonna find out what port my device is installed to. 
In my device manager, I go down to ports common LPT, and I can see the device is connected to COM port 3. So I go back to my software, I pick COM port 3, I connect, and now my model and serial number show up. Now there are some tabs across the top of this, like your control panel. And from this control panel, you can actually control the device from this software. I can change many of the settings, if not all of the settings, and then I can adjust any, any waves that I want, and I can synchronize channels 1 and channel 2. Under Extend Functionality, I have Further Settings, and then under Arbitrary, I can make my own arbitrary waveforms by combining different waveforms and adjusting those settings as well. Now what I've done is I've connected this NANG AN8008 multimeter up to the external in. And then I'm going to go to my measure function. And here I can see that it's reading 50 hertz, which is exactly what is being put out on the NANG. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to adjust that up. And as I do that, you can see that the DDS signal generator and counter can count those frequencies. All right, folks, so at this point, we're going to go ahead and we're going to crack this baby open. It's really, really light, as I mentioned, and it doesn't have any non-stick stuff here at the feet. So this thing does slide around a little bit on the table, leading me to believe that there isn't much parts or innards in this thing. Let's go ahead and get it open and see what we got. My screwdriver just barely fits. This isn't the right tool for the job, by the way. All right. I believe this piece slides back and we should be able to pop it off. Whew, and that took some wrangling. <clears throat> Let's take a look. There is a lot of space in here. So I suppose you could put your stash in here and it would be safe. <clears throat> Let's take a look. We do have a buzzer up here for when we click the buttons and it beeps. Um, over here you have our LCD controller. And then this would be our keypad or keyboard connector into the main system board. Here are your BNC inputs and you see some relays on there. Under here is our signal counter uh, BNC connector that goes into some circuitry, it looks like, back, back here. Two unknown chips uh, with heat sinks, probably one for each BNC. This would be our main chip, or I think it's called a FPGA. Taking a look at the back, you can see the TTL connector port that comes in. USB and USB controller for connecting to the computer and then you have our we have our power supply down here Not much to it. They could have made this thing significantly smaller Perhaps even taking this board and flipping it up vertically and then squishing this whole thing down to take up less real estate on the desk But it is what it is and um, I like it all right, well, let's go ahead and put this thing back together. But before I do that, I'm going to say thank you to everybody for watching. I do appreciate it. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below, and I'll do my best to respond. Thanks again for Bob Love CC for sending this out. Uh, for my consideration, I definitely appreciate it. Thank you very much, and have a nice day.